guys gotta see this. This is an awesome bow. This is a bow made in Belgium by Lombo Belgique. And uh, his website is ancienforet.be. So he's a Belgian boyer. Now, before we look at the bow in detail, I want to talk very briefly about the history of the Lombo in this region during the Hundred Years' War. Now, Belgium was not a country, but at this time, it was divided among various factions, and the territory did exchange hands, um, depending on the time period, uh, among the Holy Roman Empire, the, the French, plus their allies, and the English, plus their allies. Of this region, with the exception of the English, the crossbow was mostly used instead of the longbow. We know the English were famous of their use of the longbow, and we know that the French did sometimes use the longbow, such as the Frank archers late in the war. And the Burgundians even employed longbow mercenaries. These topics deserve their own videos. Note that the Holy Roman Empire controlled most of modern-day Wallonia, which is southern Belgium today. Regarding the Holy Roman Empire, the crossbow and later firearms were preferred for handheld projectile weapons. Interestingly, I was able to find a manuscript about German longbows. Now, I wasn't able to find if the longbow was specifically used in the Wallonian region, but resources of you could have been extracted in this region by the English Chevauché raiders or extracted by the locals to sell. If you look specifically at the shipments of the English regarding you importations, according to the book Aerostorm by Richard Wodge, many shipments are from Northern Europe and the Baltic, but there are shipments from Frisia, so it is reasonable to assume that you of this region could have been extracted by the English, just not as common as other areas of Europe. Now regarding the Flemish, they were allies of the English at some point during the war. However, most Flemish infantry were melee infantry. U longbows were used in this region, however. For example, we have archaeological evidence of the Wassenaar bow. I think that's how you pronounce it. Dated around 800 to 950 AD. Now, a replica was made, and it was estimated to be over 100 pounds, and it was made of yew without horn knocks. However, it seems that the Flemish militia themselves didn't use the longbow during the Hundred Years' War. So that is basically a quick summary of the longbow during the Hundred Years' War in this region that is known today as Belgium. Of course, Belgium didn't become a country until the 19th century, but the people of Belgium did preserve archery traditions, and the sport Poppenjay, for example, is still being practiced today in Belgium as sport, along with other countries. Now that we talk briefly about the history of archery in this region, let's focus specifically on this bow and the shooting. This is an English-style U longbow, made from European U. All the other longbows that I've shot are um, made of non-U materials, so this is the first time I get a chance to shoot um, a U bow, so I'm really happy about that. Um, it is not a war bow, it's only 70 pounds at 30 inches and about 65 pounds at 28. So let's check the draw weight. Sixty-five, sixty-six. Just because they used really, you know, above 100 pounds for, for war doesn't mean every archer shot like that. Um, for example, if you're training to get up to that weight, you need a lighter bow. Or if you're hunting, you probably don't want 100 something pounds because there's no need. And also for older folks who got injured or, you know, when you get older, you, you shoot le less weight. So it makes logically sense to get a lighter bow. So the reason why I got this weight is because I do want to sell it. And it's easier to sell it when the draw weight's li lighter, right? So it's nice to get a lighter weight sometimes. So let's talk about this bow in detail. This is made of heartwood for the uh, for the compression, and then uh, sapwood for the for the uh, back. Now, along with the U bow, I also um, finished it with beeswax because uh, I wanted an authentic medieval finish. So beeswax with a little bit of oil. This is a modern string which I use for shooting at the target range. But I also made a Flemish twist um, hemp string uh, made of European hemp. It's not Flemish hemp. It's Romanian hemp, but uh, I made a hemp string. Now, I am not a good, skilled string maker, so mine is really thick. I, I beefened it up 
because I, I don't want them to break. So. <laughs> and it's not the most premium hemp. This is hemp from, uh, from the craft store. So um, it's not as strong for, 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 for making strings. But I find it, it is suitable for 70 pounds, but they don't last long. At the target range, I like to shoot it with, um, with a Dacron string because it lasts a lot longer. Um, these days, if you want to make authentic uh, Flemish string with, you know, hemp, you you got it. You got to get it from the plant itself, or before it gets taken to the manufacturer, before it gets taken to be be woven. Um, you want to get those raw fibers. But if you make uh, if you make it from craft store, uh, specifically this is Michael Michaels. If you get it from Michaels, well, that hemp has already been. It, it's not. I think it's. Um, they have short strands and that's why they're weaker. They're not long strands of fiber, they're shorter strands, so they often uh, are weaker strings. So that's why I make them this thick. But I find it this thick, it shoots, it's just super thick for a 70 pound bow. <laughs> but um, uh, so yeah, it's fun to make a Flemish twist. And here is the Dacron string that I use um, for just regular shooting. Sometimes you stick your butt like this and you use your back. But um, that way you, you're less accurate, but it allows you to pull heavy weights. Stick your butt and then like that. Or it, because this one's like, it's, it's light enough, like you just shoot it normal. But that's boring. Thirty-four meters per second. Yeah, they're they're shooting pretty slow. But here are some light arrows I have. These they'll shoot a lot faster, obviously. Sixty no fifty-nine. Yeah, fifty-nine meters per second. Fifty-two point three meters per second. Fifty-two point three. But I hit the uh, chronograph. 52 meters per second. It's a tiny chronograph. 52 meters per second. It's okay. So now it's time to review the bow. And what I think, I think it's an awesome bow. It's a, it's not a war bow, but it doesn't have to be. I think it's nice to have you from, from Europe. At the very least, this is not you from, you know, the Pacific. Uh, this is actually you from Europe. So it is plausible that they had it back in the day. Anyways, it's a great shooting experience. Um, the the arrows uh, shoot pretty fast for for the weight. Now I am interested to sell the bow, so I can review other bows in the future. So let me know if you're interested to buy this. Uh, then I can use that money to buy another bow to review in the future. Thanks, guys.